trying to figure me out in the natural, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they're foolishness unto him. How can I pray for thousands of people at one time? By the Holy Ghost! How can I touch prayer requests that are underneath the prayer requests that I'm laying my hands on? By faith! By faith! How can I know what these people need that write me prayer requests? How do I know what, how to pray for them? By speaking in tongues. The question of whether Robert Tilton has actually prayed over followers' letters surfaced again today. Tilton is on the stand again in his lawsuit against ABC over a 1991 primetime live expose. Scott Gordon's been covering the hearing into whether ABC should be involved in rerunning the story. What happened today, Scott? Well, Charles Tilton and ABC's attorney are really going at it. One of the key questions continues to be what happens to these prayer requests that people send in. Under cross-examination by ABC's lead attorney, Tilton admitted more than 200,000 handwritten prayer requests were thrown in the trash in Tulsa with him never seeing them. That was in one mass mail run alone. Tilton says he did pray over people's actual letters sometimes, but other times prayed over computer summaries. Meanwhile, the minister and the network attorney are engaging in a war of words on their way into and out of the courthouse. And we'll prove once again this week that we were framed, that it was deception, that it was libelous, that it was slander, that it was intentional malicious harm to hurt our church and to hurt my reputation. And we felt really good about what happened last week. This week, I think, is going to be the best is yet to come. If Reverend Tilton thinks last week was a great victory, uh, I think he has an odd view of what, uh, what's a victory and what's defeat. We think we proved last week that uh, I prayed over 99.9% .9 of all the prayer requests. The only percentage that were not prayed over were the ones that were stolen out of our system and placed in the dumpster behind the bank. Well, that's just not so. I mean, the, the evidence that came in last week showed that uh, over 200,000 prayer requests uh, which were sent to Dallas and then sent uh, here to Tulsa uh, were uh, thrown in the trash here uh, on purpose. That the American public only knew how much the press influences with negative half-truths, false light, false evidence, they would be appalled. I think we're doing fine and uh, I'm hopeful and confident that at the end of the day, uh, ABC will computer management, the firm Tilton uses to categorize and computerize viewer mail. IDM President Mike Connors testified 200,000 prayer requests from an autumn 1991 mailing were trashed and shredded in Tulsa, requests that Reverend Tilton never saw. He never saw them. He never touched them. He never prayed over them. Uh, and when you talk about 200,000 prayer requests on one sort of mailing alone by Reverend Tilton, you're talking about an extraordinary amount. Abrams says ABC's expose has been proven true by such testimony and by evidence that Tilton actually prays over computer printouts, not handwritten notes, and responds to viewers' prayers with an alphabet soup of pre-printed form letters. AIDS victims receive the same letter as prayer partners wanting a new house. At most, they were the briefest sort of summaries, help, money. These people, these people let their hearts out to Reverend Tilton. On the stand last week, Tilton said God knows the specifics. Our response is that the people who wrote in expected and had reason to expect Reverend Tilton to read their prayer requests and to pray over them, and that that didn't happen. Asked if he's confident the judge will prohibit ABC from rerunning its report, Tilton didn't sound overly optimistic. Win, lose, or draw, we feel good that we're once and for all getting our evidence out as completely as possible at this time. The case is giving us an unusual inside look at the big business of television evangelism. Witnesses use words like reply devices and batch records. Mass mailings are measured by the thousands of pounds. And, of course, in a general way, it's also putting on trial the business of investigative journalism, the techniques of using hidden cameras and deception to get information. Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton was excused from his last day in Tulsa Federal Court today because of a cream pie in his face. 
Tilton is trying to stop ABC television from rebroadcasting an expose on his ministry. His lawyer says some of that pie thrown by a man outside of the courthouse last night stuck in Tilton's ear. And the preacher had to go home for medical attention. Marty Tilton walked to court without her husband Wednesday morning. As he was leaving court Tuesday evening, someone threw a piece of pie at Robert Tilton. He was hit in the side of the head. Mrs. Tilton says her husband was shocked. Uh, obviously very humiliated. We're just glad it wasn't a gun. Is he okay or was he right? I believe he's fine. His, he couldn't hear for a while. The courthouse sidewalk and door still bear traces of the pie. Tilton's lawyer says the preacher still has pie in his ear and got him excused for the rest of the hearing. Whatever it was that they threw caught him in the side of the head and it drove the substance up in his ear and uh, he couldn't get it out so he's had to go to the doctor. This morning. Joyce says the pie incident is typical of what's happened to Tilton since the primetime live segment critical of his ministry first aired and one of the reasons Tilton needs an injunction to keep ABC from running the segment again. I'm not surprised he'd say that but uh, it really it has nothing to do with anything other than the willingness of some people to break the law. One of the issues of this hearing is whether Tilton's organization knowingly tossed prayer requests in the trash in Tulsa without reading them, as ABC claimed in its expose. In the courtroom, Paul Nunn testified tons of trash prayer requests would come into his North Tulsa recycling plant, along with trinkets like miracle cloths, sand, and holy water. Federal Judge Thomas Brett could take weeks before deciding whether to issue an injunction against ABC. Scott Thompson, Channel 6 News. And all these rock throwers, there's just a lot of rock throwers out there. A lot of pie throwers out there. <laughs> Lemon meringue pie throwers. <laughs> Second, by the way, we had a great week in uh, Tulsa. Many of the press that was there said it was obvious to them that it was a major frame job. <laughs> Did they write it in the papers? The pie made it on the news. The pie made it all over the world. Said I had to go to the doctor. Thought something terrible had happened to me. Only thing that happened to me was it embarrassed me. TV evangelist Robert Tilton could be headed to jail for defying a judge's order. A Dallas lawyer says Tilton should be held in contempt of court for missing a deadline to turn over church financial records. The case involves a Dallas widow who says Tilton sent promises of healing and miracles to her husband long after the man was dead. I remember him putting his hand against the TV screen as Mr. Tilton prayed for someone with a liver problem. Norma Smith says as her husband, Tommy Lee, lay dying, he turned in his final desperation to TV well, minister Bob Tilton. Smith sent what little money he had to the preacher, and soon after, he died. But much later, his widow says, Tilton was still sending her husband mail, offering miracles for money. As others did, Norma Smith sued Tilton. Citing freedom of religion under the Constitution, Tilton refused to answer some questions or to turn over church financial records. Dallas District Judge Eric Moyer ordered the preacher to produce the documents by 4 p.m. Wednesday. The deadline passed. No papers were produced. Smith's lawyer says Tilton is stonewalling. I will ask the judge for either sanctions, such as striking their defenses, granting us a declaratory judgment. Which means you win. We win, they lose. Or ordering them to produce the documents here at this office and are holding Mr. Tilton in contempt. If the judge finds him in contempt, could he go to jail? Certainly. Tilton's Dallas lawyer, Rhonda Byrd, did offer to let the lawyer see some records in her office. When they went over to meet with her, Byrd told him the Texas Supreme Court had just issued a stay, barring Judge Moyer's order. Wright said he'd like to see it on paper. Byrd wouldn't speak with us. Tilton could not be reached. Wright says if they did get a stay, it wasn't until almost two hours after the deadline, so Tilton should still be held in contempt. It appears the Smith trial now will be delayed by all this. Both sides, meanwhile, start meeting with a mediator on Thursday. That could bring a settlement. I want to introduce to you a man that God has called, that God has anointed. He has operated under the gift of faith. 
He is an apostle of faith, prophet of prosperity, and founder of Word of Faith, Robert Tilton. Some of these uh, atheist heathens that are trying to get on my case, they said, well, if you're a prophet, how come you don't know everything? Well, according to 1 Corinthians 13, 9, we know in part and prophesy in part. So at least prophesy what you know. Hey, you know what's funny? ABC with their hidden camera up in Tulsa accidentally left their camera on in the back seat of their car and we got the conversation of what they were saying in the back seat of the car and they got a problem oh it's looking good I see the victory I see the hundredfold return And every lawsuit, I see victory over ABC. I see ABC paying out a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. See what's happening with this music? Reporters out there, don't you edit up this stuff. I'll come after you. I got a lot of attorneys, and we, this church got a lot of money. So don't mess with us. Well, the leader of the Word of Faith Church, the Reverend uh, Robert Tilton, has called a news conference for this hour. And we understand that he is responding to a contempt motion filed against him. And Texas News 5's John Garcia joins us live now with the latest on this ongoing story from the Church and Farmers Branch. John? Yeah, indeed, Brad. We are waiting for uh, Robert Tilton to come on down and uh, speak with us uh, shortly. He's uh, got a news conference scheduled. A very uh, unusual situation, as a matter of fact. Uh, Tilton, as you probably know, usually shies away from the media. We've not seen a whole lot of him lately, but he has called this news conference specifically to uh, respond to uh, charges of contempt of court follow, uh, filed by one of his former followers. He is uh, approaching the microphone right now, and we're going to listen to what he has to say. We have voluntarily given all records and financial documents to the IRS, the FBI, and postal authorities. All the records except the names, addresses of our church members have been supplied. The Attorney General Morales tried to bully and intimidate this church into handing over this protected information to his office. You may recall that a federal judge ruled that Ms. Morales' actions were unethical had been done in bad faith and were harassing and harmful to this church. The federal judge ruled that the Texas Attorney General had no right to order this information and enjoined him from further doing so. Now, a Dallas lower court has demanded that I turn over the same names, addresses, and medical records of the church members. We have complied with all request, document request, this court has asked for, except these names, addresses, and medical records. The U.S. Supreme Court has consistently held that a person's right to belong to an association, our church, is protected by the United States Constitution. According to this freedom of association provision, all church members in this country have a right to belong to the church of their choice without the fear of harassment from government agencies. Right now, 
I am responsible to protect my church members, and I'm doing so. Until such time that the U.S. Supreme Court reverses all prior decisions regarding the freedom of association, I will protect the right of my church members. Thank you very much, and God bless you. If you have any questions, you may ask my legal counsel, Ron Bird, at this time. TV evangelist Robert Tilton is vowing to defy a judge's order and risk being held in contempt to protect members of his church. As legal troubles close in on the embattled preacher, he's looking for help from the nation's highest court. Robert Tilton talking tough as he faces legal trouble coming at him from all sides. A judge now says he must reveal the inner workings of his television church. Tilton says no. That stand could get him held in contempt. Dallas District Judge Eric Moyer and the Texas Supreme Court order Tilton to produce many of the documents. Since he did not, the judge now says he must show why he should not be held in contempt and possibly punished. In his latest move, Tilton is now asking the U.S. Supreme Court to overrule the courts in Texas. He is getting to the end of his rope. I want to stop. We're entitled to it. We will not quit. We will not back off. They are personal records. They contain medical records. They contain private correspondence with church members, uh, prior physicians. The lawyers want the names of people like these who claim miracles change their lives. Reverend Tilton says he will not give up the names. He is doing his dead level best to hide behind the First Amendment and he is, he is running out of rope. Ole Anthony, who is president of the Dallas-based televangelist watchdog group Trinity Foundation, says tonight that Tilton is using the Freedom of Association Act as a smokescreen to avoid releasing the names of people that he has claimed to have healed. Dallas Judge Eric Moyer will hold a contempt of court hearing on July 23rd on Tilton's failure to produce those documents. Television evangelist Robert Tilton struck out today at the U.S. Supreme Court. The preacher is being sued by former follower Norma Smith of Dallas. She's demanding to see records of Tilton's church. Claiming he is protecting the privacy of his members, Tilton asked the high court to block that disclosure. But today, Justice Antonin Scalia turned down the request. Well, something new involving some of the lawsuits against televangelist Robert Tilton. Tim Ryan joins us live now from Tilton's headquarters with details. Tim? Um, we have just been uh, ejected. Tim, can you hear us? We are live here in the noon show with Tim. Tim, can you bring us the latest on what has been an evolving story with Reverend... We've been ejected from Reverend... Pastor Tilton's uh, headquarters. Apparently, uh, for some mysterious reason, he's declaring victory and someone's unplugging our uh, audio and video cable right now. Uh, declaring victory in a lawsuit that... I'll start signal with Tim Ryan. We'll have the very latest for you in that story this afternoon at 5 and 6. A victory for Robert Tilton in round one of lawsuits filed against him. A district judge in Tulsa has dismissed three suits filed by former followers who claim the televangelist defrauded them. But Texas News 5's John Garcia tells us this is not the final word on the matter. He defrauded them, and I'm sure they're going to win in the end, without question. Justice will prevail. A Tulsa judge, however, doesn't see it that way, ruling today to dismiss three of the lawsuits. In a brief statement to reporters, Tilton claimed victory. These cases have totally been thrown out of court. <clears throat> In the court's decision, the court found that our motions for summary judgment were based upon our religious freedoms. It's just silly. Nobody believes him. Tilton's chief critic predicts the three Oklahoma women will appeal. Tilton's cases, these cases have nothing to do with religion or freedom of religion. They have everything to do with fraud. And so there is no question that this case is going to be overturned in the Tulsa Court of Appeals or in the Oklahoma Court of Appeals. I characterized them when they were initially filed as frivolous. Uh, I have done nothing to change my opinion, and the judges are vindicating my position every time they throw one of them out. Tilton refuses to answer questions about the cases from reporters. However, the attorney who represents the three clients in Oklahoma says he plans to appeal. And on top of that, there are still six additional cases filed in Dallas County. So it is still quite possible Tilton will have to answer in court. You can't be any more confident of what will happen on the field on, on an issue. And aside There's from his no appeal, way. Gary Richardson says this two of the other cases are already set for jury trials no, later no. this year. Attorneys for the plaintiffs say the Tulsa district judge who ruled in favor of Tilton says he did so in order to clear his docket before retiring. Well, a legal setback for televangelist Robert Tilton. A federal judge in Tulsa says ABC may replay an episode of Primetime Live 
that criticizes the Tilton ministry. Attorneys for the televangelists want to stop that rebroadcast, claiming it's libelous. Tilton's suing ABC over the segment. How many of you saw, well, you shouldn't be watching some of that news, but anyway, how many of you saw we had some great victories this week and some lawsuits? Three more lawsuits thrown out of court. <laughs> Go ahead and get real happy. That, I, I, I think that's nine now that either have been dismissed or thrown out of court, and the judge in Tulsa said that they were so frivolous that they never should have been in the court system and process to begin with. So frivolous, ridiculous. And uh, so that, that made a lot of news. Of course, we had a press conference. Last week, we also had another great victory. The press didn't report it as a victory, but actually, it was a great victory. You know, we had that six days in court with the federal judge concerning uh, the, our lawsuit against ABC. And you don't sue somebody like that unless you think you got something, you know. But uh, the judge said that they could still show the program again, which we weren't too excited about. But the deal is we've already presented most of our evidence to this judge, and he sees the fallacy. And the press saw the fallacy of the frame job that ABC did on us. But there were four more things. There were four things ABC was trying to shut down, and they only shut down one of them. The press didn't report the other three that we did get. And uh, they first warned us to just shut, uh, shut down the lawsuit, which the judge says, nope, there is legitimate reason for this suit to be here, and it is going to trial. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Number two, Diane Sawyer is going to be here. <laughs> Sitting in Tulsa, Oklahoma, along with some of her cohorts, to answer our questions of the statements that they said against me in this church and the gospel. So it may look like we lost something by stopping them from rebroadcasting it. I don't think they will, but if they do, who cares? But ask Diane Sawyer if she won. Because she's going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she's going to answer those questions. Either that or they're going to write a big check. A big check. Everybody say a big check. So that was, a, to me, that was another token or sign of God's goodness. Also, you know that uh, they, they want our membership list. The, the judge, the judge here wants a membership list. Well, you don't have to give the membership list to any government organization. But we've got one judge that doesn't understand that. And so we went to see Barefoot Sanders. How many of you ever heard of the infamous Barefoot Sanders? I thought him and Billy the Kid were long gone, but he's still alive. <laughs> and so we got to see Barefoot Sanders this week. And the back of the courtroom was just filled with all these people. And I thought it was the press, but they didn't look like the press. It looked like a bunch of young attorneys. And what it was, it was the court clerks, which are our young attorneys. And they'd all come back in the back to see this happening that went on in this courtroom Friday with Tilton showing up to meet with this federal judge. And I said, well, what are they all doing here? He says, he says, normally it's not very exciting around here. But with you here, it's exciting. They all come to see what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, the big issue is, is Tilton going to jail? The answer is not. Everybody say not. A federal judge today rejected Robert Tilton's latest attempt to avoid a Friday court date. The TV preacher wanted an injunction against Dallas uh, Judge Eric Moyer so Tilton could not be forced to surrender church records. But Tilton's request was denied, and the evangelist has been ordered to appear in Moyer's court on Friday morning. Good evening. Controversial evangelist Robert Tilton could claim victory today. At least he did not end up in jail. Tilton avoids a contempt of court charge, but is under orders to turn over church documents he says are privileged. Tim Ryan reports. The flamboyant TV preacher said he would not turn over the documents, but faced with going to jail, he's willing to back down. And this is not the final say here, you know. Hey, I'm going to obey all the laws. So if it comes down to it, you've exhausted everything, and they say you got to turn this stuff over, you turn it over? Absolutely. Absolutely. You won't like it? No, no, and my members won't like it because they're really up in arms. You would be, too, if you were a member of a church and you did, if you gave out, uh, if you were a pastor, and they asked you for your church membership list. Judge Eric Moyer overruled Tilton's arguments. He ordered the preacher to turn over the papers and 2,000 hours of tapes within a week. Tilton's feet are to the fire. And if discovery is not by August 2nd, uh, 
It's going to be some fireworks. Well, you're going home. I didn't go to jail. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Y'all don't have were you, story. <laughs> were you willing to go to jail? Absolutely. I don't make statements unless I mean them. Felton says he'll keep trying to withhold the records and is appealing to the Texas Supreme Court. And all of you that are watching by satellite, this just blesses me that you would take the time to turn on your dish, be a part of our satellite home church membership group. And thanks to all of you for continuing to support the satellite feed uh, financially and to continue to pray for us that we'll continue to be victorious over all of our enemies. And I think we've got nine lawsuits thrown out now and about three or four left to go or nine people uh, who sued me are no longer suing me. Let's put it that away. Either dismissed or uh, thrown out of court. I think there's three or four left, but uh, those are very insignificant. And we're just going to keep pursuing our enemies until we conquer ABC in prime time. And uh, all these attorneys that tried to clog up our legal system, judicial system, we're going to go after, continue to go after them on the conspiracy charges. So we're pursuing, overtaking, and without fail, we will recover all. Amen. God bless you. And you know, we had a little court thing yesterday, day before yesterday. I'm not sure what happened, except I'm not in jail today. That's all I know. And they didn't get the membership list. <laughs> Amazing. So Bob, they asked me, said, Bob, what happened? I said, I don't know, except I'm going home. <laughs> and they didn't get anything new, you know, so just got to turn one-inch tapes into half-inch tapes. That'd take about 10 years, but anyway. be a good job for somebody for 10 years anyway I'd like to make a I would like to make a statement this morning for the press and those that are watching up at ABC we know you watch and monitor the Sunday services and so forth looking for anything you can catch me on so I have something to say so if you want to get your pencil and piece of paper or turn your tape recorders on I'd like to read you a statement that was prepared several thousand years ago Psalms 1837 from the Living Bible. I chased my enemies and caught up with them. Hello. Well, that's my report for those of you that want to take that and edit that up. Go ahead. A Dallas judge has refused to dismiss a lawsuit against television evangelist Robert Tilton and his Word of Faith Church. Four ex-followers accused Tilton and the church of fraud and of causing emotional distress. State District Judge John Marshall dismissed claims against other parties named in the suit, including Tilton's wife, Marty, and one of the preacher's lawyers. The case against Tilton is now set for trial for September 13th. TV preacher Robert Tilton continues tonight to defy a judge's order to release information about his congregation. Last week, one of those church members testified in court that she backs the preacher's policy because she wants privacy. But as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports, the woman hasn't always been so reticent. In a court hearing last Friday, Tilton's lawyers brought as a witness a church member known only as Eve. She said she didn't want the public to know her last name or anything about her to safeguard her privacy. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, indeed. Eve testified that she had skin cancer and that after Reverend Tilton prayed with her, the cancer vanished. Even though she praised the miracle in a videotaped testimonial shown on the air, she said she still wanted her privacy protected. You want the people out in the TV audience to believe that you had a miracle. Is that true? Yes. But you don't want them to be able to question you personally for their own satisfaction to determine if there really was a miracle. Is that no. what you're telling the court? No. However, in late 1991, Eve and her husband went with Tilton on a church tour of Israel and while there appeared on a live broadcast with him. I have here with me Dr. Mark and Eve Lover and Eve you had something wrong with you. What was wrong with you and when was this? After the television preacher identified them both on the program seen in North America and Europe, the woman told how Tilton performed a miracle that took away her skin cancer. And in the name of Jesus, we just prayed. I went back to the doctor the next week. He did the surgery. He opened me. He found nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sound the trumpet in Zion. Today, a deadline imposed by Judge Eric Moyer ran out. He ordered Tilton to turn over to those suing him tapes and papers that show the names of members and how they were healed. But the pastor says he will not do it. If we need to go to jail, we'll go to jail. Don't want to, but if we need to do that to stand up for our members' rights, freedom of uh, association, the First Amendment of the Constitution, we're going to continue to do that.
The opposing lawyer now vows to force Tilton back to court and again ask Judge Moyer to find him in contempt and to punish him. Like I said, the rope's gotten shorter and it's real short rope and I think it's uh, the end is near. I am not turning over anything that has to do with our membership list. What did you turn over today? We're turning over everything that we're supposed to be turning over today and uh, some of your records are not clear and some of the statements you made on the news today were not accurate. And so now another contempt of court hearing set for August 12th. Praise God. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus, that last month, word of faith was in the black. Everybody say, praise the Lord. <laughs> and everything the devil has stolen, he has to restore sevenfold. And uh, we had about 18 months of red ink. Serious, 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 serious red ink. And to be in the black, even though it was in $26,000, I cried. It blessed my socks off. I mean, I got so excited. You have no idea. Used to, if uh, $26,000 was left over, we, we, uh, we'd complain. But I don't complain anymore. Hallelujah. The Lord has delivered me from complaining about that. Hallelujah. It's kind of like the, the parsonage the church did own in California. Uh, we bought the parsonage, I think, for one seven and sold it for two seven. So the church made a million dollars off of it. That's not, nothing to sneeze at, is it? In recession, to make a million bucks off a of parsonage? Hallelujah. So that means that uh, God just blessed the church with an extra million dollars. And uh, it's just a principle of seed time and harvest. Didn't bless Marty and I. We could have bought that facility, but we didn't. Uh, we let the church buy it, so the church made money off the investment. You don't ever hear that on prime time, but they don't want to say anything good, do they? Well, you know, we got a little showdown coming up this week at the courts. We're still refusing to give uh, uh, the list of people's names who we consider to be members of this church and ministry. They say they don't want all of them. Well, what's the difference between part of them and all of them? Our all of them is, is more. The partial list of people that they want is more than the largest churches in America. Supporters of television preacher Bob Tilton held a rally today in downtown Dallas. One follower ripped down a sign carried by someone she felt was disrespecting the evangelist, as Channel H Bill Brown reports. I'm so glad that Jesus sent me free, singing glory, hallelujah. They feel their religious leader is getting a bad rap in the news and in court, so they came down to the courthouse to say so. About 40 followers of Reverend Bob Tilton marched around carrying signs that said, Faith on Trial and Stop Invasion of Privacy. Tilton was supposed to be inside in court in a hearing as part of a lawsuit filed against him by a former follower. But Tilton accused Judge Eric Moyer of being prejudiced against him after the judge ordered the preacher to turn over names and information about his members. So now another judge must decide if Moyer is biased or not. Bob Tilton is much like Jesus. I didn't say he is Jesus. I said he's much like Jesus and that he's done nothing wrong. Even in the time when Jesus walked on the earth, they didn't like what he said and they killed him for it. The marchers say the action against Tilton is unconstitutional and could lead to illegal acts against any American church. It got more interesting when several people showed up saying they're part of the Bob Tilton Fan Club, a Dallas satirical group that holds parties and shows tapes of Tilton preaching. This man calls himself Brother Randall. I sure would hate for him to be taken off the air. Uh, why would you hate to have him taken off? Well, you know, they, they canceled Green Acres, they, they canceled F Troop, you know. It's, 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 just, it's really one of the most entertaining things you can, you can see in success in life. How very, very entertaining. Just slapping the desk and screaming and speaking in tongues and casting out demons. A woman from the fan club held up a sign with a picture of Tilton on it, a sign the marchers didn't like. So they all gathered around her and began to speak in tongues. Then one Tilton follower grabbed the woman's sign and tore it up. What'd she say? Yeah, what did that lady say to you in your song? Huh? What did that lady say to your song? Yeah, what did that lady say to your song? I don't know. I really don't know. She just grabbed hold of it and broke it. And I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> that doesn't bump to and turn you like on. He does me. A few minutes later, though, it was all patched up. The Tilton follower told the woman she was sorry she tore up her sign. And to show it, she gave her $5. In a few days, the Tilton action moves off the street and back into the courtroom. Thank you. And God bless you. And Bob. 
Well, I got an apology and five bucks for breaking my sign. God bless Bob Tilton Ministries. Robert Tilton supporters picket outside the George Allen Courts building. They don't believe Word of Faith members are getting a fair shake in the legal system. Neither does their leader church members that uh, are really uh, tired of being pushed around and treated as second-class citizens and are standing up for their rights. Tilton is not here at the rally and insists he had nothing to do with setting it up, but he will be back here at the courthouse August 25th when he tries to have Judge Eric Moyer removed from one of his legal battles. We just want a, a balanced justice system, and uh, we feel like that he is definitely uh, prejudiced against us. Tilton admits two years of legal battles and bad publicity have hurt his church. Membership is down, and giving has dropped from $64 million to $26 million a year. But Tilton says he's not giving up and says he'll go to jail before turning over his membership list. I believe it's right. I believe it's ethical. And until the highest court in America tells me that I have to turn it over, I'm not going to turn it over. And the supporters marching at the courts building today are solidly behind him. As for the judge, he has refused to comment on Tilton's claim that he's prejudiced or the televangelist's efforts to remove him from the case. TV preacher Robert Tilton filed today for divorce from his wife, Marty. It could get messy and lead to a battle over who gets what from the couple's multi-million dollar television church empire. And there's more, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. I just changed. I just fell in love with everybody. Not anymore. TV preacher Bob Tilton says he's fallen out of love with his wife, Marty. He wants her out of his church, out of his life, and so he filed for divorce in Dallas. Married for 25 years, they joined in a profitable partnership. With his fire and brimstone performances on stage, on camera, Bob lured the people to their TV sets at home to watch him. Marty was the business brains of the television church, and it made them multimillionaires. In his filing, the minister said, the marriage has become insupportable because of discord or conflict of personalities that destroys the legitimate ends of the marriage relationship. There are indications that the two have not lived together for weeks, perhaps months. Marty Tilton has told people that five weeks ago, her husband fired her from her top job in the church. An attorney for an ex-follower suing Tilton feels the divorce may be a trick to hide millions of dollars. And he says he'll legally try to stop anything underhanded. Either try to get a restraining order from depleting assets, uh, filed a, a suit, as a third-party claimant in the divorce saying that we have a potential claim and that we want it addressed by the divorce court uh, so that the assets don't dis disappear. The Tiltons have two grown children and two boys still living at home, ages 8 and 10. The evangelist says he'll go on supporting the kids, that his wife can have primary possession, but he wants them part of the time. And he says he and Marty will agree to split up what they own. That includes the Word of Faith Parsonage, their home, an 11,000-square-foot mansion in Las Colinas, their luxury condo and yacht in Florida, and other wealth, perhaps $90 million or more. Where's this woman that stood up? One of Tilton's critics believes the Tilton breakup could devastate the church. It probably was inevitable, and it probably will cause the downfall of uh, the success in life in the Word of Faith ministry. As recently as three weeks ago, Tilton joked about rumors that his wife was planning to leave him. This is the man that's rumored to run off with my wife and is scounded with $4 million. Dan, is that true? I'm sorry you found out about it. <laughs> it had to come out sooner or later. Boy, For like Tilton's followers, it is yet another unsettling development. Ole Anthony, a frequent critic, calls it a disaster for the Tiltons and their church. In the world of the Word Faith movement, uh, divorce is is a no-no for, for their spiritual leaders. Uh, there will be a huge defection. I think it's a disaster, a, a divorce. I hate divorce almost above all things. Um, and for his church, it's just a sad day. Um, we've never had anything to, bad to say against his church. It's always been the fraud that was being perpetrated in the television ministry that we had uh, the problems with. A Word of Faith spokesperson says they will have no comment on the staff members' private lives. Robert Tilton is calling upon his faith, he says, to pull him through troubled times. The local televangelist spoke yesterday as part of a two-hour message at the Word of Faith Family Church. He never mentioned his recently announced divorce proceedings, per se. Tilton told some 2,000 church members that God had ministered to him in a special way this week. His wife, Marty Tilton, attended yesterday's services. 
televangelist Robert Tilton was back in court today. The Word of Faith minister says District Judge Eric Moyer is biased against him, and he wants him removed from the case. 9 o'clock news reporter Rhonda Guess has more on the hearing and the supporters who turned out for Tilton. Word of Faith members marched in front of the George Allen Courts building this morning in support of their pastor. They say this woman's voice was healed by the televangelist last Sunday, and it was just such claims of healing which are at the heart of a $50 million lawsuit brought by Norma Smith. Tilton supporters stand behind him. The only people who don't like Robert Tilton are people who are against the things he stands for, which is healing, which is speaking in tongues, which is laying hands on the sick. Today is the third rally by Word of Faith members to show support for their pastor, Robert Tilton. But they say they're also out here to defend their constitutional rights. Like Robert Tilton, they want to see Judge Eric Moyer off the case. They say Moyer's order for Tilton to release church records is a violation of the right to association. Moyer chose to testify today about telephone conversations with Word of Faith members about the case. The district judge told the court many people have tried to engage him in conversation about the case. Right. The people who wish to express an opinion about this matter, and in each of those occasions I say I do not want to hear your opinion about whether one side or the other side should prevail. Hilton says he will continue to fight Judge Moyer's order. Uh, all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has not turned it down. The Supreme Court said it was not in the proper procedure or timing, and when it was in correct timing, they would hear. I think it's awful what they're trying to say about Judge Moyer. He's on the judge. He is trying to do his job and do his right. I'm simply stating my religious rights and freedoms under the Constitution and standing up for the members of our church and freedom of association and right of privacy. And I believe that he does not understand that. Judge Eric Moyer was on the witness stand instead of on the bench saying he's done nothing improper in his handling of this case. Tilton and his lawyers disagree. Think he's being unfair to you? Absolutely. And he is a fraud. And I'm with God's grace, I'm approving. Norma Smith says even after her husband died, Tilton's Word of Faith Church harassed her for more and more money. She calls it intentional infliction of emotional distress. Her lawyers call this move to remove the judge something else. This is a total, it's, it's a bad tactic by any law firm to do basic, baseless allegations against a judge. Mrs. Smith's attorneys think Tilton encouraged his congregation to call and write the judge. They mentioned a July 25th sermon in which they believe Tilton made a plea for help. They said they had a tape recording of Tilton claiming one particular judge was giving him a lot of trouble. Tilton denies the accusation. I was simply standing up for their rights by standing up for the freedom of association, not turning over the church membership list. If they want to do something about it, that was their business, and we were not recommending it or, or encouraging them to do it. Now, the judge did say that, uh, that uh, he overruled your rights of association, that, uh, that uh, we had to uh, turn over the membership list, and that uh, the, our constitutional right, your constitutional right, a freedom of association, uh, he, he said that he didn't, uh, in this particular situation, believe that you had that. So if you want your name to be given out uh, to people that are notorious for leaks and so forth, uh, fine. If you don't, then you need to start letting your voice be heard and your fingers do some writing and the postman do the walking and start doing everything you can to, uh, to uh, get aggravated because you've got enough reason to get aggravated and you had other churches out there, you got enough reason to be aggravated too. Yeah. Read my lips. One of the seminal cases, the pivotal, seminal first case in the area of freedom of association was the National Association for the Advancement of Color, P Colored People, NAACP, versus the state of Alabama in the 60s. And the NAA won that they did not have to turn over the records of who belonged to the NAACP. And then there's one right after the next, after the next. So. We've got this state judge. This state judge, a state judge, actually allowed that to be put in the, the request of what these attorneys wanted. Amazing, a state judge, a case so simple. And I might as well just say the rest of it, a black state judge. In court, the winner is Judge Eric Moyer. The loser is TV evangelist Bob Tilton. Tilton and his lawyers called the judge a liar and one-sided. And they battled to throw him out of a case in which an ex-follower is suing the preacher. But that argument did not work, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports.
The preacher's lawyers claim Moyer over and over showed he was on the side of Norma Smith and her lawyers. So the pastor and his attorneys fought to get Moyer thrown out of the case. They claim Judge Moyer winked at Smith's lawyer in court and made hand signals, leaving no doubt he was on his side. They also claim Moyer held intimate, whispered conversations with Smith attorney Tony Wright. The other side call all of this absurd and ridiculous. At times, you could feel the anger and bitterness in court between the two sides. You've run out of your bag of tricks, haven't you? You're down to a wink, aren't you? Objection, argumentative. Somebody's lying here, aren't they? Either you're lying or Judge Moyer's lying. That's correct. Who's lying? Judge Moyer. He basically feels that somehow he was undermined. He is a new judge. He's a baby judge. He, uh, the court can determine his own judicial temperament and decisions regarding how all this has come about. But he basically has the worst case of federal judge itis that I have ever seen. When they get caught doing wrong, oh, they're going to pull up every sneaky, dirty little trick that they can think of. And they're doing it. Still doing it accusing a fine judge of impropriety. After the tense two-day hearing, the visiting judge, H.G. Andrews, made his ruling. The judge says his first reaction was to remove Judge Moyer from the case. Maybe the judicial system was, was under attack, and therefore we should have another judge hear it, not because of anything that Judge Moyer had done wrong. After reflection on it, though, uh, I don't think that's a proper course of action. I realize the seriousness of it in insofar as the deep-seated <coughs> problem uh, that we have uh, of conflict between separation of church and state and <coughs> the freedom of religion. Uh, so I have given this matter serious thought. I will <coughs> make a finding of fact that uh, Judge Moyer uh, has not been biased or prejudiced in this matter. I believe I have a fair chance and because the judge is an understanding judge and he's righteous and he's, I respect him. And I believe that um, it's going to work out for us. And so, work out for me, a lot more Norm Smith out there like me. You think you're going to win? Yes. They called him a liar. And they were proven that they were wrong. Moyer is not a liar, he's a good man. It's, it's, it's you know, it's two years of horrendous uh, pressures and stress and trials and tribulations and persecution spawned mostly by some of you folks with the way that you've edited and cut tapes. This doesn't mean it's over. Uh, we're just beginning to begin to present our evidence and to go on with life and uh, believe God for the best. And the best is yet to come. Reverend Bob Tilton says he'll never give up, that he's fighting for freedom of religion. His opponents are claiming he's really just running a religious scam to rake in money. Who's right? Looking for the answer to that could tie up the courts for years. And the battle goes on. Now the lawyers opposing Tilton want him and his lawyers legally sanctioned or punished for misconduct, and the preacher then held in contempt. The next round comes in court on Monday. Televangelist Robert Tilton has until Friday to turn over records he has refused to give up so far. Tilton's attorneys appeared before Dallas District Court Judge Eric Moyer. They asked the judge to reconsider his motion, ordering them to disclose those church records. Judge Moyer says does not negotiate court orders and gave Tilton's team until Friday to produce the records. If they fail to do so, Judge Moyer could find Tilton in contempt of court. Court is satisfied based on the record that document production has not been completed in violation of rules of discovery, the court will consider as appropriate contempt for the violation, the continued violation of this court's order at that time. I can't outguess them. They'll probably bring us a bunch of trash like they have before. But uh, I think the judges, <laughs> I thought, two or three times back the rope was getting short. He said that's the end of the rope and it's his call. Tilton contends the court order is unconstitutional. The lawsuit goes to trial in November. And this little game here, this is like a movie set here they're putting on us. Televangelist Robert Tilton complies with a court order to produce church documents and does so in a big way. Good afternoon, everyone. The ongoing legal battle between Tilton and a former Word of Faith follower tops our news at midday. Well, the number of church records and documents delivered by Tilton to a Dallas lawyer this morning appeared to reach biblical proportions. Channel Ace Bill Brown joins us live from the Allen Court Building in downtown Dallas with the story. Bill? 
Quinn, we have some new information just in. Uh, Judge Eric Moyer has just uh, severely punished Robert Tilton and his attorneys. He socked Tilton with an $81,000 fine. Uh, the $81,000 will be paid uh, in attorney's fees to the lawyers for uh, plaintiff Norma Smith, the former church member of Tilton's who is now suing him. So he has to pay $81,000 to the other side within two weeks. So uh, a pretty serious uh, sanction by the judge there. After refusing for more than a year, Tilton this morning turned over a ton of documents, many tons, uh, a virtual caravan of trucks and vans to the law office of the plaintiff uh, attorneys of Norma Smith. Between five and eight million papers and thousands and thousands of hours of videotape from Tulsa and from Dallas. Now, Tilton's lawyers say uh, they are getting prayer requests from the TV viewers, letters, memos, plus a sealed list of uh, church members' names and phone numbers who have been involved in these alleged healings and testimonials, all of that to be kept secret from the public and the press. But Norma Smith's lawyers label the caravan of trucks a big stunt. Well, obviously, I think they got a needle in the haystack. They brought their own haystack for us. So we're going to go through it all and find what we need. You think this is everything you've asked for? They finally given it? Well, it should be. It's enough here. So you both... You trust that they brought you everything back? I don't trust anything uh, Reverend Tillman's attorneys do. Uh, <laughs> why? Well, just from their past behavior, everything they've done so far, and this little game here, this is like a movie set here they're putting on us. Uh, we really want about, I would say, two boxes of files. That's what we want. We want the testimonials and the medical on the testimonials. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation for everyone that believes. What about the medical documents? What about them? Hey, we got all... The guy says, once I was blind, now I see. What kind of documents do you need? All documents have been revealed, and everything that's supposed to be turned over, as far as I know, has been turned over. In the trial, now set for the 4th of October, the opposing attorneys will try to prove that while Tilton has said that all the miracles are medically documented, that really that's not true. In fact, in a deposition once, Tilton was asked by a lawyer, is there anyone else that you have published their names that you claimed has received healing that's been documented, medically speaking, as a result of your having prayed for them? Tilton's answer, no. Now in more trouble for the TV preacher, the FCC today slapped Lake Dallas television station KLDT, Channel 55, with a fine of $20,000. Calling it the Power Channel, a while back, Tilton broadcast on it around the clock. He later stopped. The government charges that the station owners never formally acknowledged Tilton had taken over their airwaves. Reverend Tilton said today he gave up the names and personal information on church members only after the members agreed to it. We do have little extra expenses this week that we didn't quite count on. $81,000. $81,000 worth, but that's nothing for a church like us, is it? That didn't sound like $81,000 off extra offering to me. <laughs> that sounded like about a thousand. <laughs> How many of you going to tithe this morning? How many of you going to give an extra offering this morning? How many of you want to <laughs> give the devil a real big black eye? I mean a black eye. The devil can't push us around, can he? One of the most powerful ways of releasing your faith is through your giving. Not giving what you don't have, the Word of God declares in our daily Bible reading today, but giving what you do have and what you can do. So we're going to worship the Lord through our giving. I want you to let the Lord speak to you about an extra amount this morning. And I'm not kidding. Read my lips. <laughs> An extra amount. Some of you, God, God, speak to some of them with an extra thousand bucks. In the name of Jesus. Who is that person? We need 81 of them. <laughs> Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton pays up tonight. Tilton's lawyers appeared in Dallas Judge Eric Moyer's courtroom today to pay the $81,000 fine for delaying production of documents requested by the court. The Tilton's attorneys, by the way, failed to get that case thrown out today. And a federal appeals court up in Denver today upheld dismissal of Tilton's lawsuit against the Dallas-based televangelist watchdog Ole Anthony, saying his Trinity Foundation did not conspire to destroy Tilton or his word of faith, church. Okay, get your checkbooks out. We're going to plant some seed.
Press down, shaking together, running over. Get your, get your wallet, your checkbook, your purse, and hold them up high. And we're going to bless them. If your offering's already ready, get it up. Okay, get your checks ready. And if you normally give 50, give 100. If you normally give 100, give 10,000. <laughs> I got your attention there, didn't I? Yes, what are you going to do with all that money, Bob? Spend it. That's the fact. Live. This is Texas News 5 at noon. Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton is pulling the plug on his TV ministry today. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Topping our news, the embattled TV minister is taking his show off the air and that will reportedly mean massive layoffs in his ministry. A Dallas-based watchdog group is pleased with Tilton's decision to go off the air. Ole Anthony's Trinity Foundation has had its eye on Tilton's ministry for some time. Texas News 5's Marion Connor is at the foundation headquarters. She joins us now live with the very latest. Marion. The Trinity Foundation began its investigation of the ministry back in the in the late 80s, and it was Mr. Ole Anthony who personally rooted through Tilton's trash and found thousands of prayer requests that he says Tilton not only didn't even look at, much less pray over. I have Mr. Anthony with me this morning. Could you tell me, first of all, what is your reaction to Tilton going off the air? Well, I'm, I'm very sad for all of the people that have lost their jobs and they, they were without employment insurance, they won't get unemployment. But from the standpoint of all of the scandalous activities that he's been per perpetrating in the American public, I'm very, very happy. Uh, the scandal, the, the fraud, the mail fraud, can, and the, uh, the stuff that he was doing on the air can stop. What kind of uh, effect do you think this is really going to have on other televangelists? Well, it will always...